Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, <coughs> big shit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 you know, Madeira, what's going I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, join our membership. Do everything you need to do to support this brand because let me tell you, we giving out our content, fire content every single day. But how you can become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below on our YouTube channel. There is a link that says join our membership. Follow all the instructions. Click that link and you will see all the exclusive information, content that you will see before everybody else. And you never know, you get some prizes and surprises. Thank you in advance, and we love you. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, we got a guy in here that don't need no introduction, man. Since I've been since I've been running around, man, doing this boss talk thing, I ran into a real one, man. Big homie show is in the building. Yeah, the, the introduction is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, nothing wrong with, ain't nothing wrong with a little introduction. Man, how you doing, man? Cool. Working hard, man. Man, you know, this, hey, man, running. listen, man. It's been a minute, man. I say, yeah. you know, you always on the show, so you a frequenter, man. Like, mm -hmm. man, um, this the project, man. Listen, this thing right here, man, got it's going. It, it the nah for real is on this one too. The nah for real on there, the remix and the original on there. Yeah. Wow, man. You yeah. know, when when you when you first started this 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 rejuvenation is what I call it, because mm -hmm. you already been you you've been you know as far as the rap game. The, the the lyrics and just the way you present yourself, you've always you've been doing the music, right? Mm -hmm. When I talked to Bobo, he's like, "Man, be on the show." He been doing that. Mm -hmm. He been doing, you know, you yeah, know how he yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm like, "Man, I know it, man." But it, it's something different on it. it. It's something. What sparked you this time to just go at it like you going at it? Oh uh, man, just realizing what I did wrong all the times that I did it before and correcting it. Okay, you know. Um, a little bit older, so a little bit more wiser too. I'm a lot more calm than I was when I when I was younger. So I think, um, you know, just looking back at, you know, I, I guess you could say I lost to learn how to win. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I just took the mistakes that I know, and you still don't. The, the beauty of the, the the music industry is nobody can tell you how to make it, right? For everybody, the the journey might be a little different. So, but I, one thing I do know is I can look back on the past and see what I done wrong. So, uh, you know, this time around, I just just looked at the mistakes I made and tried to correct them. And, uh, you know, with, 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 uh, with the wisdom came uh, a lot more patience, too. Wow. You know, I just utilized the relationships that um, I made along the way. Wow. Yeah. Man, you know, like I said, man, you you you... A lot of a lot of times, you know, you see the people in the city, they get in the motion, everybody talking. But mm -hmm. when you was running and doing your run and, and people was from Snoop, DJ Khaled, all these people was 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 commit you know, it was no nah, for real was everywhere. Do you feel like the city embraced it or do you feel like they ducked it? Uh, I feel like the DJs uh and the people embraced it. I feel like sometimes, um, as far as the credit for what I've done, I get overlooked a lot. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, the people who can, I guess, shine the light on your accomplishments uh, for whatever reason. Sometimes they choose not to. But, you know, that's okay, too. You know, because... Uh, I got my own light, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. No, I, so I, I know how to I know how to position the light on myself, even when people not speaking on, you know what I'm doing. If you if you waiting on the on the hand claps, you might as well not do this. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I, I feel like um, the DJs embraced it, and with the DJs embracing it, the people gravitated towards it. But yeah, do I feel a bit slighted sometimes? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And, and do, how do you harness that? Like, like, do you feel like, like, like you, you, you probably the only one. I, I really don't know of nobody that's got a collab with Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, not recently for sure, but just thinking back in the day in this, in the in, in Texas, mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to figure out who was really, you know, rocking with him like that. Um, I can't think of nobody. You, you see what, what I'm saying? saying? To be honest with you, but that was that because that was big for me to see Snoop. You know, uh, really locking into that song, engaging with you like that. Like mm -hmm. it's like, damn, you know, Snoop ain't really rock with nobody, right? Like right. that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it was big for me. Uh, some people, I mean, there are people that felt like I, even after I got the verse from Snoop, that uh, I should have maybe put somebody else on the record, but I didn't see it that way. I, I don't see, to me, like Snoop is like the the biggest rapper on the West Coast. So that's like getting a verse from Jay-Z and then taking it off and putting somebody else on it. Once you go to that level of a feature, there was nobody else that I could put on that record to me that would have made sense after he done it. Now, if I'd have done it before he got on it, maybe. But after he got on it, I mean, just think, you got an icon on the record. There's nobody else that would make sense to me. That's just my personal opinion. But why did they feel that way? And also, did they suggest somebody that they think that you should have put them on there? What yeah, did they, they suggested, say? They suggested several people. I mean, I've been on several platforms and said that uh, when I when I initially wrote the record, I only wrote one verse because I was going to put Big X to plug on the record. Mm -hmm. uh, they suggested, you know, artists like Finesse Two Times was one. You know, and so on and so forth. But, you know, at the same time, um, their reasons, I mean, you know, everybody But once got Snoop them. came into it, they shouldn't have been suggesting nobody else. This was after the Snoop. Oh, after this was Snoop. after the Snoop. After I got the verse from Snoop. They, okay. I mean, they just felt like, for whatever reason, it was some people out there that felt like, I mean, you know, Snoop ain't, ain't hot right now. Snoop ain't got no record right now. But I'm like, but it's... It's like saying Jay Z ain't got a record right now. Right? Would you turn down a verse from from Jay Z? Like it don't make sense. I hear a lot of people talk you know about that. Saying? They overlook the OGs and put more emphasis on the new and hot, you know, artists right now, and just look overlook the the legends, so to say. And I'm like, that don't make no sense. Your demographic is what you make it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think every record has its place. So um, if I'm doing a certain records. I'm I'm reaching for a certain demographic. So if I'm doing a like like I had somebody like one of my partners told me, one of my partners told me I got a record with uh with Johnny Damn D on the album, and it's a remake of T Cash Bridge Legs. Mm -hmm. It's called Art You Back. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see that. Right, and he say he don't like the record. I say, but the record ain't for you. You ain't supposed to be arching your back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So I think every song has a certain demographic. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, to to say, well, the OGs or this, that, and the third, I think you can make songs that are, a, are for a specific, specific, you know, demographic. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's just music. You know, you just enjoy it. If you enjoy it, cool. And everybody got their own personal opinion. That's like me saying, uh, well, I feel like... Um, <coughs> this person should have been on a Drake record or something. That's just my personal opinion, but... I mean, at the end of the day, you as the artist got the right to do with it what you choose. What did you think about uh, Drake in this battle with Kendrick? And do you feel like he, because you brought up Drake, I just wanted to ask mm -hmm. you that while I'm thinking about it. Do you feel like he, he, um, do you feel like, how do you feel like he lands in this? Um, He'll be fine, man. I mean, he's. With the body of work that he's already had and the career that he's had, his ticket sales ain't going to slow up none. His checks ain't going to slow up none. He ain't losing no houses or no cars. You know, uh, salute to both of those men. I think they put on a, a, a great uh, moment uh, for the state of hip-hop. And I, mean, I think that's where it's going to start and stop it. It was just a moment in time. We've seen this happen before. Um Throughout the you know throughout the years of the culture, where people have chose to go against each other, and it's just a moment in history, and you know that's just that. But uh, for those two people in particular, I think they'll be fine. I don't think either will be affected. You know, no, I don't think it was no losers now. Wow, Did no. you, what did you think when you seen? Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but I just talked about it. Um, um, Fifty went over to Canada after. <laughs> after. <laughs> 
<laughs> to Toronto, <laughs> Toronto after uh, Rick Ross went over there, and he had a few things to say on the stage. You seen that? Yeah, I think. Um, I think. I think for Ross to be uh, the caliber of um, icon he is, that he was just lacking that day. You know, just being honest, um, there's no way that you are a man of that caliber and status and you're not moving with an army with you. I mean, you know, we just done lost, we done lost too many people by not being prepared. And I, you would think somebody, you know, of that magnitude would understand that and be moving in a way that they protect themselves. And he was just slipping, but, you know, I bet you that won't happen no more. <laughs> Ain't nothing like being embarrassed to 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 make you step your or, game, up. or just being in a situation where you might have to swing on your own. Cause mm -hmm. you know it was it was it, it, <laughs> it was, ain't no almost it was there. You it know was, what I'm saying yeah. if they would have applied a little bit more pressure, it, it could have got serious. Yeah, he was gonna have to dig. You know what I'm saying? He was gonna have I to dig. I think he was prepared sure. though. I think he's like, I, I gotta do what I gotta do. At the end of the day, the man then you know he he stood his ground. Yeah, you know you, you seen him coming out the back when he came out the back. It looked like what? Well, yeah, you know, you know <laughs> the man the man punched him. You know he he got in there and at least you know let it be known. Hey, it's a dog over here. I mean, uh, I know I'm outnumbered, number, but <laughs> it's a bunch of you. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, a bunch yeah, of y'all, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, but he did it gracefully. He ain't take out running. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He gracefully bagged out. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's that was, cool. But but then like I say, Fifty went over there and then he brought it up on stage and said. uh Hey man, you know, I seen when y'all kicked Rick, uh, uh, Rick Ross. You know he named yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah. Like over I mean, here, like but, 50, 50, What do fifty be serious? Yeah, he's serious. I mean, he seemed to be serious to me. I mean, the man been out twenty years and he ain't been playing now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about for when he went over. There. He, he really don't. He don't. He not getting down with Rick Ross. That for sure. I, I think fifty is very vocal about who he uh, who, he rock, who he rock with and who he don't. Yeah. So I think if he. If he makes a statement that he feeling a certain type of way about somebody, he's serious. I about think he's pretty serious. I mean, over the years, he ain't never, you know, showed to be playing. The only person that Fifty done went back and forth with that he kind of smoothed it over with over the years was Floyd. Other than that, he don't he don't take nothing. He still respectfully call Floyd the champ when he speak on him. He say champ, champ this, champ that. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, you ain't never heard Fifty. If he disrespects somebody, you ain't never heard him take it back. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're or, right. Or shy away from it. The only person, that's why I know it's a certain level of love and respect there because that's the only person that he done had some type of friction or confrontation with that he still respectfully speaks on his name. What do you think about it being, you know, you, you originally from Louisiana for him doing what he doing in Shreveport, like rocking out like he doing down there? Uh, for Louisiana to be... Um, I'm from you know I'm from there, so I know that Louisiana is a a poor state. Ain't no ain't no ain't no shortcuts around it. You know, uh, it's a state that has limited resources, which is why uh, it produces uh, some of the the. I'm trying to find a way to say it. <laughs> why it produces uh, some of the the more aggressive behavior that you see. Out of people from Louisiana, uh, it's a it's a it's a place of limited resources and it's very small. So when you have disagreements with people, you can't hide. Um, it just forces you to deal with your problems, uh, kind of head on. So uh, to see him come into uh, the state and potentially provide more jobs and more opportunities for. Um, for people over there, that's dope. We need a whole lot more of that, not just in uh, in Louisiana, but just in within our um, our race as a whole. Yeah. We need more people to make it to a certain level to come back and be able to create jobs and opportunities for our people. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't never, you don't never really see me just just knocking nobody, even if they don't give me, you know, my flowers. I grow my own. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I ain't just in this shit to just be. Kicking, you know, kicking on nobody. That ain't really my thing. Man, um, when you look at the the artists around that you hear, you know, I hear, I never met these guys. I was put on the phone with their people one time, though, about, you know, maybe interviewing them. Uh, Zillionaire Doe, mm -hmm. Montana 700, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The, you know they they younger. When you see, have you ran into these guys? Yeah, yeah. When you see them, what 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 is that energy like? And and do you try to give them some because you've been in the game, and you've been where they you know basically they they running through the tunnels right now. Man, I'm glad you said that um, because it's it's been a lot of talk about uh, new Dallas and yeah, new Dallas, Dallas. You know Dallas, what I'm saying? Dallas. Old niggas and this, that, and the third. Um, I love what they do. Because uh, it reminds me of when I was their age. So I would say this for the older uh, artists or even the older consumers. You got to understand, uh, in our age uh, bracket, your mama or your daddy didn't understand pop, right? But That's you right. was young and it, it spoke to you. So um, for me and my age, I ain't got no business saying what ain't shouldn't be a, a what is or what ain't for a man that's 22 and 23 years old because I'm not in his age demographic. You understand what I'm saying? So to speak on them is unfair. That's like like I said, when your mom was telling you, turn that shit down, da, 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 because they were older and they was maybe on Marvin Gaye and that spoke to them. So it really ain't my place to be saying that ain't what that is. Hey, man, if, if that age group fucking with it and that's what that is for their age group I don't knock it you know what I'm saying I fuck with it uh, when I see them uh, the, the times that I've uh, seen them out I mean they always show love they don't seem to look like they need too much guidance but I know that they got a lot they got OGs around them so they don't need me to be a big homie to them they got people around them that so I already you know what I'm saying got them you know I'm putting them where they need to be but I think it's unfair for uh, the older generation to kind of knock them because I mean you don't see them shitting on what the fuck I'm doing yeah. I've yet to see them say anything disrespectful about what Big Homie Show doing in his lane in his demographic so it would be unfair for me to shit on what they doing in their lane you know what I'm saying but I mean I'm a uh, I ain't trying to do what they doing because I can't do that I've already passed that age they can't do, you know what I'm saying, what I'm doing because they haven't reached this age yet. But we both just, you know, represent the city as a whole. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you know, I support them. I fuck with them, you know, and when I did see them, it was love. Man, and, that's good you know, stuff. That's that's how I see it. Yeah, what about um um <clears throat> you you put uh Mr. Hit that on the intro of this this right. this project. Like right. what how did how did you end up doing that and what caused you to pick him? I just tried to recreate the moment. Uh, if you know anything about Hit That, he's a hell of a critic on, on music. He would look you in your face and tell you your shit whack. You know what I'm saying? So um, even though we had known each other and seen each other around the city, um, he didn't particularly know me for music. So when we first got around each other, he was very, like, I mean, I right, you got a nod for real, but... Like I'm not, I'm not impressed. Everybody can look up and get one record. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, you know, how long you gonna last? Type shit. And I played him record after record after record, and then I actually wrapped the intro for him. And he was so impressed by it that he was like, "Nah, let me, let me wrap this for me right now. And let me post this on my page. Let me turn you up." So when it came time to actually do the record. I made him a part of the song to recreate the moment. See, for me, my album is like a time capsule. So some of these records that's on this project is a year and some change old. You know what I'm saying? So when I put this out, it 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 time stamps a time in my life for me. You know what I'm saying? So everything around it, famous animal is on there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Boss talk ain't on there. <laughs> yeah, nigga, real life street stars is on there, famous albums on there. I'm looking at that like, what the hell, <laughs> bro? I know damn well I was there when you first performed, nigga. That nigga fool. What the <laughs> hell? That nigga said, "Boss talk ain't on." Bro. Boss talk ain't on there. I tell you what, he, on this project, get the next one. <laughs> I'm gonna let you get on there and talk your boss talk. No, shit. no, 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 no. I'm gonna I, let you I'm do just, an intro or saying. something. I'm gonna you let know, you, you do did an intro do a song with our name on it though, didn't he? I say, I, 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 I mentioned. Boss talk. Boss talk on the album. Damn but sure you gotta did. listen to the album. You gotta listen to the album. Well, listen I listen knew I was album. on there. It's real quick, right? Mm-hmm. No, it was hard. He let me hear it and everything. Oh, okay. I told my story. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and that's that's just the way he is. He I just said, always showed love. I called E from Boss Talk. Then I went to Famous Animal. Yeah, I, I spoke on I, it's that song. That particular record is uh, called Life Story, and I basically take you from uh, how I started, and it just kind of takes you on a brief ride to how we got here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a dope record, you know. Uh, you got a lot of dope records though. Even did, did, what about the one that had the, like the slow tempo? The one that the one that you performed. Oh, uh, is that even on there? or It's not. You didn't, didn't make it. Yeah, the uh, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, it's on there. Okay. I just shot the I just shot the video uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, whatever you want. Show I just us shot that the is. video to whatever you want in Atlanta. Uh, Mike Bliss Mike came Bliss out and blessed me, and he did a, a cameo appearance. Uh, in the video for me, man, and uh, uh, shot by Six K Hefe. Uh, yeah, shout out to Six K Hefe, nigga. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. hard. I'm putting it together, man. I'm rolling it out like you know, like you're supposed to. Yeah, I'm taking my time and just putting it together, man. What yeah. made you pick Six K Hefe to work with? Uh, he shot now for real, wow. and um, I don't know if y'all know this, but Six K in a minute. It's gonna be untouchable. Really? Absolutely. I mean, he done. You know, he done uh, transitioned to Atlanta. Yeah. And he studied climbing up the Atlanta. I mean, uh, sorry, the ladder. And in a minute, with the artist that he's working with, and the clientele that he's having, I understand that a poor nigga like me ain't gonna be able to afford the nigga much longer. You feel what I'm saying? So I figure I better go on and get me. <laughs> that nigga ain't poor, oh, y'all. Don't believe that nigga. That nigga playing I game. I better go on and get me a nut yeah. in while I can't afford it, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, so it's like that. He going that way. He definitely going that way. But not only that, man, uh, his work is, I mean, and not to say that, I mean, half price shot the big homie, um, the big homie joint. Uh, mellow shot for me. Uh, Man, I'm just, I'm having a great time just watching me tell them what my vision is and them, then them painting a picture of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't understand that's a whole different level of artistry to be able to tell somebody, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And then they go create the look for you, the image for you. Like, it's dope. And, and everybody got a different mindset of how they going to do it. So I could tell... Paint when uh, and Hefe the same idea and they're gonna create two different things. And that's dope. How many projects did you do visuals for? I mean, how many songs on this project did you do visuals for? Well, I'm steady doing them. Okay. So uh I wanna shoot the song with me and Twisted Black Cow on the set. Okay. Uh I wanna shoot that. I finally got a chance to perform with the OG. That's hard. Finally. That's why my did only. you choose why did you choose Twisted Black to put him on there? On the set. Ah, well, there's a story behind that record. Okay, let me hear it. The record was originally wrote. Um, it was I wrote. I was trying to get a feature from Mac Ten. Um, shout out to C Dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he put me in contact with Mac and was like, "Bro, he hard. He was one of the he was one of the people that gave me the nod. Like, nah, bro, hard. You know what I'm saying?" when him and Street was considering working with me, they sent my music to certain people. Like, I'm trying to make sure that I'm listening and I'm hearing what I think I'm hearing. And he was like, hell nah, that nigga hard, oh, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I wrote the record in hopes to get him on it and we were supposed to do it. And uh, man, the man just got the key to Inglewood, got a whole lot going on and I'm in the midst to get my project together. I played the record for Twisted Black at a video shoot. He loved it. Mm. And I, after I played it for him and I'm listening to him, I'm like, this is a perfect joint for him. You know what I'm saying? It's perfect. And when you hear it, like, hit that spoke on it. Like, it's one of the dopest uh, songs on the project, for sure. Wow. Like, it's it's very power. It's a, power, <coughs> it's a powerful record. Man, so. you, you like I said, you, you don't stop working, man. Uh, 16 songs, do you think that's... Um, you you you, hey! Listen, man. A lot of people not putting that many songs on projects. You you barely sent eight nine. What made you do sixteen? 
Because the last time I put some out, I only gave them three or four. So I feel like I shortchanged them a little bit. You know, you got to think now this this journey has been, what, a year and a half? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in a year and a half, you've only gotten four records from me. I've been working so hard that you ain't even noticed that. You ain't even really got that many songs for me. So uh, I just felt like I just wanted to put out a body of work that'll, that'll hold me. I can work for a while. It's like, you know, it's just like being in the street. Nigga just re up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I got I got a nice little old supply, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work it back out there until it's time to you know re up again. You feel me? Let's talk about Fumble for a minute. Mm -hmm. what, what what inspired Fumble? Man, uh, shout out to my my partner Papa Hussein, um, who's my I call him my uncle, uh, Rod D out of Arkansas, his artist, and. Uh, Super talented guy. He can sing, rap, you know what I mean? And uh we collab back and forth on a on a lot of joints that people don't know. And um uh, I had a dope beat and I just sent it to him. He sent me back the hook. I laid the verses and you know that was it, you know. It's like it don't take long. You know, when I when I feel it, it's just a vibe. And I'm really just it don't really take me a long time to do it because I'm really telling you my life. Past tense, you know, a little bit of present tense, but I'm really just reciting and uh, reflecting on things that have already happened to me or I already experienced. So, wow. it ain't nothing. What, you, you named one famous animal. Was that because when you and him got together, you felt like you rocked that mic like that? Yeah, because I actually went and did Famous Animal. Yeah, you went down. To I went Memphis. to Memphis and done it. I remember when me and you talked about it. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, I, I actually did the interview here first. Yeah. And I was going to Famous Animal the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yep. that was the beginning uh, of the journey for real. I like that guy. Like, like, what did you? Because you know he been on Boss Talk too. But mm -hmm. what did you? What made you want to go to his show? Uh, to be completely honest with you, I was looking for the fastest way to get some attention. And at that time, he had the hottest platform going. And if you went on there and went off, it it it, it solidified you that you was hard. Um, and I got the cosign from Lucci right here. See, it be a lot of shit. You did, you, you did. You know what I'm saying? Behind the scenes that people don't see. Like, I respect niggas' opinion. Lucci hard. Yeah, he came on here. So if I, if I rap it to Lucci and Lucci say it's hard, I'm going to Memphis with the intent that it's hard. So you respect Lucci and his, his opinion? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like, he is one and not of those only, guys. not only that, like, I'm one of them people that I, I still fuck with young niggas, OGs, young niggas, big homies, OGs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't turn my shoulder to nobody. And that's why people fuck with me, because I'm, I'm real personable like that. Did you, you know do I mean? you, you feel like when you went to Famous Animal, it did what you wanted it to Hell do? Hell yeah. What did you, did, what was the, what, what were you trying to get? To? What was the oh. feedback? Man, to this day, uh, I got the most followers from being on his platform. Wow. Like, when when he dropped that flow that day, my followers looked like a fucking clock. Like, they started <laughs> going. And it lasted for a, a nice little minute. I ain't been on a platform yet. Like that? That did that for me. Not even Sway? Mm-mm. It didn't roll it like that? Mm-mm. Sway was a big look, and shout out to Sway in the morning, you know what I'm saying, for having me. And it got me some followers, but I'm saying, you got to understand, Sway is, Sway's platform is like elite. Like, that's like, you going to uh, Cosmic Kev, you going to uh, Funk Flex, you going to LA Leakers, just incredible. That's like, I went quick, you know what I'm saying, to the elite, but Famous Animal was like, the streets, like, rapping on the block, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the streets saying you hard. And that's a different type of hard. Because we all know that you could be on the elite and really not be that hard. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So, when the streets say you hard, and for me going there first, it just mentally prepared me for to go to the elite. Okay, the streets say I'm hard. So I ain't had no problem when the lights came on in the elite situation because the streets say I'm hard. I'm already stamped. That's I'm what ready. really matters is the street. Yeah, it's the people, man. Like, everybody be talking, and not to knock, you know, nobody, but everybody be talking this gatekeeper this and that. It's the, listen, artists, it's the people. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the people. If the people fucking with you, it's nothing nobody can do. 
Nothing. That's one hundred percent. I don't care how if the people fuck with you. That's all you need. That's all you need. What about man Rain? You know Rain come on here a lot. Rain have a lot to say about a lot of stuff to go on. And, and matter of fact, Sauce Walker named him the one of the elite gatekeepers in Dallas, actually, right now. Um, what um, when you think about him when he said that uh, you were, uh, you know, pretty much the side choosing thing, like like you not rocking with Mo Three like you should. Like, what did you get from that? Um. Let me say this. Before I get into answering that question, let me say uh, salute the rain. First yeah. of all, he he heavier than people think. Cause like I say, I, I'm not I'm not in the business of, of, of tearing nobody down. Um, and this gonna be crazy when I say this, but even in a in a negative light, cause some may look at what he said. Is negative because some of my people did. Um, he still mentioned me. Yeah. And I didn't. I did not been mentioned negatively or positively. You understand what I'm saying? So I respect the fact that he even mentioned the nigga. Yeah. Hard as much work as I'm putting in, nigga. Least you could do is mention the nigga. Yeah. That's smart. That's even if you say you don't like the shit, goddamn, act like you see me, nigga. That's real. Because you can't act like you don't see me, nigga. That's real. You know what I'm no, saying? No, that's real. That's real. That's you real. Know what I'm saying? Boy, man, real. So, um, yeah, you know, I respect. Rain got this way of of, of trolling you into stardom. <laughs> At least you know. Yeah. And 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 if you smart enough, you can see that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, my response to that right here, right now, would be, he said that I would blow a lot faster if I was to choose a side or just, you know, em embrace, uh, I want to say embrace uh, the North, whatever that means. Um, but I want to say that I feel like uh, I got here because of hard work and talent, the same way 3 did. Um, 3 didn't need to use nobody's name because he was talented. Big Homie Show don't need to hold on to nobody's name because he's talented. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's no difference in, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm three because I wanted a, a, a Mo3 fan. He's an excel, He was an exceptional talent. And even in his in his absence, he still is. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Big Homie Show is too. So with that being said, I don't need to hold on to nobody's name. I don't need to hold on to anything because I'm talented, just like uh, your former artist was. And I hope you hit it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but if that's the case, if that's why, if the, if he feels that way, my only counter to that would be, you got a label full of artists over there. Why you need Big Homie Show to say it? If you feel like I'm not doing it and it would get me there faster, why not tell your artists to do it and get them there faster? Wow. Yeah. If you feel like the key to somebody blowing up would be to embrace whatever it is that he feel like I should do, you manage artists. You've been, and I, I'm humble enough to say that you've been, you've took an artist to a level that I haven't been yet. So you should know how to take an artist there because you've already been there. So if you saying this is what I should do to get there, you manage artists. Why not turn around and tell your artists? To take them there, to do it. If that's if that's all that, because I don't think that you're going to manage somebody that you don't feel like is talented, right? So if you feel like they got the talent of a big homie show, why not tell your artist to do what you think I'm not doing and take your artist there so you can get some more money? Wow, yeah. I I want to go back to uh, Mr. Hit that. Mr. Mm -hmm. Hit that said that your song blew so fast it blew faster than you. You know, to where people, you know, like you couldn't get, like you couldn't get around it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He he put it in a way to where just the song was huge. You know, mm -hmm. it was a big song. It grew, mm -hmm. and people knew the song before they knew the artist almost per, per se. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Because he did say that. I now just thinking back to the interview when I interviewed him because I asked him about you. I always ask people about you know the people in the city. Uh, I think that depends on who you ask. 
Um, when I move around the city and outside the city, yeah, you know, people people pretty familiar with who be on the show. He is. said it like that. It was just like the song. He just gave the 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 sense that the song was huge. You know, like it went big. Cause I that's what I seen. Like that song went. Nobody hadn't got that kind of traction on no song outside of probably Big X. Mm -hmm. That was the way that song was moving. Uh, it's no, relationship. Um, it's what relationship you call it? Based. Who's that? Too, um, for four bats. Four bats. Of course. That, yeah, he, he signed. It's relationship based. But you see what I'm saying? That that thing went to where DJ Khaled, everybody was just everywhere. It was everywhere. Mm. And I was talking about the radio play and just how that song just, you know, boom. I mean, but do you knock a man because he connected? No, you don't. Some more records going to be like that for me. Because of my relationships, because of how I carry myself, because I've how I continue to carry myself over the years, not just because I got a record out. Even when I didn't have a record, I was the same person, and that's why people fuck with me. So it ain't just that record. It's gonna be some more records that's gonna be just like that, because of my, you know, what I'm saying my relationships and uh, the network that I have. So I mean, uh, all you can do, man, is is work this shit and roll it out the way, if you're an independent artist, roll it out the same way a major would. So uh, if I have relationships or if they feel like the record is moving so fast through the street, because you got to think, like, one would say that, but people would forget that I was doing three and four clubs a night just to get this record going by myself. By myself. Does that method still work? I'm still going... Archie back, I'm still pulling, ask the DJs. I'm still pulling up to the club. I ain't by myself no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm still pulling up to the club, you know what I'm saying? Giving them my record to let them know, like, ain't nothing changed. Yeah. But the beauty of this shit was that I had everything before I started rapping. You know what I'm saying? So nothing, I didn't, oh, I got an eye for real, so now the women like me. Oh, he got an eye for real, so now niggas is fucking with him. They they standing up for him. Oh, now he got an eye for real, so he got a chain or something like that. No. So I'm able to be the same because to me, nothing has changed. Will I ever get to see you work with Darrow? I fuck with Darrow. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I tell you, somebody asked me, who, who do I dream of working with? And I thought about it for a minute my mind was rolling I ain't gonna lie like I was thinking who would if I could really work with somebody who would I want to work with and I thought about it I want to work with whoever want to work with me that's all because I don't want to work with nobody that don't want to work, work with, with big homie yeah that's right so I mean the answer to that question is I want to work with whoever want to work with me whether it's the row whether it's yellow bees whether it's trap bar whether it's Z and now Montana Kevin guy bands Big X the plug. Nigga, I fuck with them all. When I see him, it's respect. Salute. I ain't it's love, bro. I just I just know you and Duro are killing. Y'all y'all killing. Yeah, me and Duro, you know. Duro be pulling, man, when I hear him eat. any of his new projects anytime I hear him that hope he come in here and show me stuff, man, I be like, God, dog, cause I I know y'all got some. Me and Puka Leroy got a record. Damn show, sure do mm -hmm. I seen that. That's another nigga. Puka Leroy, another one. He another one. Why did you choose him? He chose me. Oh, he chose you. It's the, it's on. not on this project though, minute. right? Puka, you know Puka. He, me and him. That's my dark skin. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we yeah. got this light skin, dark skin shit yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they be like, nigga, hey. we got a partner, you no know, name Reese, and it took Reese. Eight to ten months to make that happen. Why it take so long? <sighs> Puka is doing uh, ciphers for sure. Mm -hmm. I talked to him all. Of, that's my boy. And initially, they wanted Big Homie Show to do a cipher. Big Homie Show don't do ciphers. Oh, okay. You do what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know whether he took it as a like. And so, so, yeah, so. you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just I don't do ciphers. And we've had that debate. 
You and you and Puka Leroy. Hell yeah. <laughs> he disagrees. He pushing, he pushing them hoe. He disagrees with me wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? Because he looks at it as it's a different promotional tool. And I just look at it, you know, uh, like... Big homie show just don't do cypher. Do you Why? think it would downgrade your brand if you did a cypher? It depends on who was on the cypher. If it was Big Homie Show, Big Tuck, The Row, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And that and when I say that, that's not to, you know, dim nobody light. I'm saying that how I want to say this, because you got to be real careful when you say what you're saying. Because <laughs> I know I know how people are, right? Like people sensitive. I just I just want to like I told Puka, I just want to do something. It's not nothing against the cipher. I just want to do something that we can market and sell, and not to say that he can't market and sell the cipher because it's coming out on your um, channel and all of that. But I would rather us do a song. That we could do a video to, that we could push to the clubs, push to the radio, push as a, a song. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, I mean, it's hard to get a cypher played on the radio. It's going to be hard to get a cypher played in the club. And it's very seldom that I hear a cypher, hear somebody riding around bumping a cypher. Not to say that it's not happening. I'm just saying, I feel like we stand a better chance making a dope record than me just getting giving you a 10 bar, 12 bar on a cypher that just goes to somebody else. I'd rather give you a verse that's going to be, you know what I'm saying, that we can we can try to market. So I just um, when when I think about Puka Leroy and the ciphers, and I haven't spoken on this is probably the first time that I even said something about it because of you bring it up because me and Puka Leroy are really close knitted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. But his, his 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 big cousin Smoke, that's my that's who that's one of my main cats. Like like rock with him ever since we were kids. So he had valid points. But but the thing I say about what he does with the ciphers is it brings a certain sense of unity Absolutely. to the city, and I think that's what I see more. It don't go. It, you're not gonna. He not gonna get the the. You know niggas don't love to get roses anyway. But at the end of the day, what he's doing. Connecting the dots and putting those people on the same tracks like he's doing is really elevating unity in the city in a sense to where people that's dealing with it, they feel it. And the people that love those people and those artists that do rap, I think it gives them all a unified force. The beauty of it is at the end of the day, when he came at me with his points, I agree with him. And when I told him why I felt the way I felt and why I don't do them, he agreed with me too. We but understood each other. The beauty of it is that two real ones can come together and Absolutely. connect and have a grown man conversation yeah. and still walk away and do a project together mm -hmm. when you're looking from ECEO standpoint. Shout out to my when you brother. Get, you, when you can come together and still do a song and, you know, I think that's the beauty of it. So when I seen y'all connect, because I seen it. He told me, bro, it's I, very I, I important. Really, I, I enjoy seeing y'all together because I, I got a lot of love for both of you. He told me it's very important that, that we stay on the same page and stay unified out here. That we yeah. never look divided, and I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but that's why it took so long to make it. But when he he sent me another record first, and I thought I was finished start working on that one, and before I could start writing it that one, he said, nah, I'm going to send you another one. And when he sent that one, I was like, this the one. Wow. It, it flowed like water, man. It did. It's a great Kobe and Shaq. Jordan when is it coming Pippen. out? Uh, I mean, it's, it's Puka record. It's not my record. Okay. So, uh, but I know we shot the video already. Y'all did. Yeah. So, so it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming for sure. What about um, Lotto? What's up with that song? Let's go back to your project. Okay. Shout out to Puka Leroy for sure. Yeah, for sure. What, what about that Lotto though? For sure. Like, like what, 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 what inspired that? Is it Big Lotto? Or? It had no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you been messing with it? it, it uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that, I thought big you were gonna be on the re remix. See, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my daddy be so big, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'll be your daddy though, goddamn me. <laughs> Shit, but now um, the record is just a feel good record, like some summertime shit. And uh, I reached out to Power Wall, and uh, he had came, he had came out here, 
And uh, I've been knowing Powell for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I pulled up on him, man, and he showed me a lot of love, and he said we was going to get it done. I sent him the record, and he jumped right on it within a week. I think, I think it took him like a week. He sent it right back. He always, Powell always show love. Yeah. He always been that way from the very beginning. Yeah, man. Um. You know, you never seen no sense of, you never felt hate from nothing that he done. No project, nobody he interacted with. You never heard nothing from this dude but just straight love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when man. I seen him, he run up and we hugged it out because we've been knowing each other for years. Yeah, It's something about when a genuine person comes up to you, you can feel their energy. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bank and Scream told me that. Yeah. You know, when I um at the Togetherland when I seen them, I always I, I always wanted to meet, you know, Bank. Mm -hmm. I just never met the man, but just watching his journey throughout, you know, social media and how highly people speak of him, certified real. And I just wanted to meet him and uh from just the conversation that we had, side conversation that we had, he decided to interview me. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh at Togetherland and uh gave me that, that light, him and Scream and uh um damn, I don't wanna uh I can't even think of her name. I'm tripping. I can see her. I I, I definitely, you know, they she always be and, yeah. and um damn. damn. I can't think of her name either, but I definitely Jay, know. Baby yeah, Jay. Yeah, baby Jay, Jay, Jay. Yeah. My bad, man, Jay. Shout out to them, man. My bad. I love my black people, bro. For sure, for sure. And I always want to get respect uh, when somebody, you know, give me an opportunity to be on a platform and shine some awareness on what I'm doing. So, uh, but it's the same thing, man. You know, sometimes you can just, you know, sort of like our relationship. Sometimes, man, you meet some people, bro, and it just, you can just tell. Yeah. That this is a relationship that's worth, you know, uh, keeping and, and uh, cultivating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And let, allowing it to grow into something uh, bigger and greater. It's just the same old two step for us. You've seen how we are. You've seen us, you know, the way we've been rolling forever. And yeah, it's been years now. Everything man. that we doing, man, we, we, we still on the same old two step. You ever noticed that? Like, when we ain't. And then no hurry, you know, the word of God tells us don't be anxious for nothing, man. So, yeah. you know, we just patiently doing whatever God put on our heart to do. Same way. You know what I'm saying? Same way, man. I ain't in no hurry. Yeah. I take my time with it because you got to love this. Yeah, yeah. You really got to love this. I don't care if you, uh, if you doing media, whether you doing, you know, artists or whether you, you know, whatever it is that you do uh, that's in this thing that we call hip hop. You gonna learn that you you gonna have to be patient. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. But when your time come, man, and even for me, like it's a big difference from the day that I first walked in here and said I did that first boss talk interview. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. It's different. Yeah, it's different. You know, but so, but you've been working though. So but it, patient too. Patient. Yeah. Yeah. I, I what? When, okay. Think about how many artists in let's just say a year and a half. Just really think about it. A year and a half, an artist spend ten, fifteen thousand. Easy, quit. Oh, they do it all the time. So much so that I watch who I interview because of it. Quit because I be trying to make sure that we don't waste their time and we don't want to waste ours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can see it in the eyes. Videos, they gonna get frustrated. Ain't no money coming in. You feel like you deserve to be on the list. I know I do. <laughs> I know I do and got the stats to show that I should be you know what I'm saying you're gonna get frustrated you're gonna spend money ain't nothing gonna be coming in baby mama telling you you need your mama telling you you need to get a fucking job and they quit you know what I'm saying it's a big difference from the day that I first came in here and did that first boss talk interview to today wow because I just kept going, kept regardless, going. no, matter, no what. matter what. You got to separate your personal life from this shit. You can't bring what's going on in your household <clears throat> into this entertainment shit. Because when I pull up to these shows or meet and greets or schools, they don't give a fuck about what's going on in my household. They want to see Big Homie Show. That's real. They want to hear Nah for real. They want you to entertain. They want you to smile, take pictures. They don't give a fuck about whatever the f 
your stove just went out or your AC just, they don't give a fuck about that. They ain't trying to hear it is. Yeah, so you got to learn how to step out of that and step into this for real. That's one of the, it's another gem that I could say that you got to learn how to step and be able to differentiate between the two. You know what I'm saying? But how far should an artist take it or should you take it? Like if you putting your all into it and all your finances into it, you still got responsibilities and some people put their last into it. Yeah. Trying to make it happen. What is your your um your what should I say, your cutoff? There isn't one. If you really believe you're that good. Right now, if somebody walked in here right now and said, we're going to go five verses. We're going to bet 2000 If I got my last 2000 I'm going to bet it. I feel like I'm that hard. Knowing you got responsibilities and everything else. But as long as I'm alive, I got to get some more money anyway. See, I done been broke before. So I know that, okay, I'm at zero now. That just means when I walk up out of here, I got to do something to get some more money. You understand what I'm saying? But if a nigga tell you, I don't look at it as a loss. I look at it as I'm going to be up 2000 Mm-hmm. It depends on how you look at it. I know I'm hard. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So if I had my last 2,000, and niggas say we're going to go verse for verse, five verse, have you seen me? You seen me on Sway? You seen me on Bay Bay? You seen me on uh, Famous Animal? You seen me on Rap Economics? Nigga, this two, I'm 2,000 up. I don't look at it no other way. I don't, I don't see no loss in it. I'm willing to go to the extent of being broke if you feel like you that dope. Wow. Because as long as you here, you got to get some more money anyway. If you're gonna stay on earth, you got to get some money. It just is what it is. What um the name of the project is Top of the Bottom. Top of the bottom. They can go on Amazon. I mean they can go on everywhere. all streaming platforms. It'll be on everything. Because I feel like um you got the bottom, which is motherfuckers that's worried about shit that they shouldn't be worried about in the game. Um, and then you got the elite and in this city that's the big extra plugs the yellow bees the, the rose you know what I'm saying they 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 up there already and I ain't quite made it up there but I damn sure ain't down there you know what I'm saying yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm at the top of the bottle you know what so, I'm saying yeah straight like that that's all top of the bottle man so we can get it on Apple we can get it everywhere mm-hmm can't wait, man. So, man, what, 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 um, what, what do you want to ask him before before I get him off here? You saw that this has been going everywhere, and you know we've been seeing so much injustice going on. Yeah, I hate um, that. I know you've seen that video of that young lady who got shot by the police. Mm-hmm. What are your views on that situation? Oh man, um, you know. I'm going to take it a step further than that, even with her and even with the Trump situation, right? It goes to show you where we at as a country when you can get shot at and people think it's fake. Ain't nobody going to think that her situation is fake. No, 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 no. I'm saying just in general. Mm -hmm. We've got so desensitized to violence, you know what I'm saying, that somebody can get shot at. And people won't even believe it. They'll think it's for publicity and attention. Because right? of society, the way, because of the internet, social media. Right. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, in her situation, it's fucked up. But how many times have we seen this, right? And I said that to, to be a segue to this, like, it's become so common. Violence in any form has become so common we don't even be f***ed up about it. You see it? Because even That's the crazy. young lady here you know in Dallas who got shot in her in her own house, in, in Texas, who got shot in her house, she called the police and she got shot, but that was a different situation. Mm. This time, they were actually in her house. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? And what was so appalling to a lot of people is the fact that she said to the police officer, you know, I rebuke that mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. Mm. And then you pull your gun over right. something like that right. like how like like why and then some people would say well 
he probably thought that she was going to throw the hot, but she went down on her knees holding the, yeah, like holding how the pot. is this, po- I know he was arrested and stuff, but still, how is that possible? You know what I mean? And you could even say it's a cultural difference because when we say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, we as you know, black people look at it as something different. Okay, how do they look at it when you know you say something like that? Because you know what I mean? What how what do they think we mean when we say something like that? Could it be something like that? Or? Physically, we have to understand that um, we possess intimidating powers. And I think she didn't do anything wrong, but I think us as a race of people, we have to understand that. I mean, have you ever walked into a place and just your presence just, you can tell that it intimidates people. We got to be mindful that our, our presence is powerful. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're dealing with somebody who's not like you. When you're dealing with somebody who's not your kind, you have to understand how powerful your presence is. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that you should change it, but just be mindful. You know what I mean? That's true. Um, it's very sad. And like I said, it's a sad, we're in a sad place when violence on any level is just, it's just a scroll up now or a scroll down. Damn, that's fucked up. I just pray that's that crazy. her, I pray that her death do not go in vain. I pray that it changes some laws. I pray that that situation, you know, never happens again. Although I pray that, you know, it. it We've been praying on that one for a long I know, time. But for it has to time. change. It, it, how many times? And then you see people say, that's why we don't call the police. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I mean? And with yeah. situations like this, more and more you see it, how can we feel safe calling the police? I mean, you got to be the judgment of that, you know, and and I think that once you call them again, once you alert the authorities, you have to be mindful that they pulling up to, you know what I'm saying, on some bullshit. And can you even say... And, 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 and not in their defense. It's just a it's a very thin line because even as a, I got a my brother an officer. I was about to you know say, do saying? we need more black policemen? My brother an officer. Okay. So I always tell him, bro, be careful, be safe. You know what I'm saying? You know, in California, especially in Cali. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, Jess, I love you, boy. Be safe. I'll say you again on the interview. But uh, think of the mind state that he had to be in going to a hostile situation. You know, they 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 spook just like we spook. You right. know what I'm saying? They're human beings. Not to not to try to say that that's what that was. Right. That ain't what that was. But I'm saying, me as a just a rapper, I couldn't imagine the mindset of pulling up to a hostile situation knowing that I got to be, you know what I'm saying, the 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 peace or whatever the f- you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. And I think it's a very, very, uh, it's a very hard position to be put in when you need help and you're the person that's coming for help, right? Yeah, but in her situation, they crazy. were in there they talking to her first. Because as a, as, and being as, calm. in our culture, you got to think, damn, do I need to call the police? Because they might fuck me out more. That's a right. position to be in yeah. when you need some help. And you calling him like God. Can damn. we can we re- request? Okay, can we get a black officer or can we get a Hispanic officer? Yeah. Can we get a you know? You know, yeah, it's, it's to a point where when you even even at our home or in this. Why well, I gotta be that? Why we can't just be people? Yeah, when you, because that turns racial. Even though we know how to deal with each other more, but yeah, because sometimes there is we a cultural know. difference that sometimes they might not understand certain things. But even us as the people, sometimes when a nigga show up, we treat him worse than we. That's true too, and that's f- we got to stop that too, because a white man can pull up and get more respect than a brother. Yeah, in some situations, you would disrespect him so fast. Oh, you know, coon ass nigga, da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying? The Uncle Tom ass nigga. We'll disrespect the black man who trying to rectify the problem faster than the white man pull up everybody, get in their car, put the guns up, put the weed so out. Have you ever been in the hood? I know you done been in the hood and seen a white police pass through and everybody just changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In that situation, if she, <laughs> if she was white, 
Do you think it would have had the same outcome? No. Absolutely not. Okay, that's no. all I'm going to say. Absolutely not. Big homie show, man. Thank you for coming on the show one the more big again, one, man. man. I appreciate you. I was the second, my birthday. August the second, the yeah, project Top of the drops. bottom is finally here, top man. Top of the bottom uh, is finally here. I like to say one of the dopest projects that's going to come out in 2024. I like to call it a time capsule. Uh, shout out to everybody who was involved uh, in the process and the journey. We're going to keep on pushing. And, uh, man, I ain't nowhere near tired. Man, check it, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Mm. Guys Give Show, Big Homie Show, uh, Big Homie Show at Yahoo if you're trying to book me, get a feature. Man, you know, catch me in the street. I be in the club, in the neighborhood. I be here with <laughs> Man, check it, man. My boy Big Homie Show, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. 